this time I'd like to call the South Union Township July monthly meeting to order. Will we please stand for a moment of silent prayer and do the Pledge of Allegiance. Do our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We're going to item number four, roll call. Mr. Schiffler? Here. Mr. Scott? Here. Okay. Number five, we're going, it's the Roadmaster's report, I'll handle that. For the month of June, we did the following. We hauled compost from our transfer station to Uniontown Station behind 84 Lumber, 13 days. We ran our tractor throughout the township, 12 days. We milled in patch areas throughout the township for 13 days. Uh, we cleaned the sheepskin trail along with the doggy park daily. We picked up litter throughout the township. We put in a new inlet on the Collar Road. Uh, we paid an inlet on, repaired an inlet on Virginia Circle. We weed whacked in front of all the guardrails in the township and uh, also our compost area. We trimmed some tree branches that were hanging out over our township roads. Uh, we painted our parking space in front of our office and across the street there where we're at now at the recreation center. Uh, we painted the crosswalks in front of the, our office. Our, our mechanics, with the help of Mr. Scott, reconditioned our sweeper truck. Uh, it was going to cost us close to $200 to, re to replace it, but with Mr. Scott and our two mechanics, uh, put their brains together, and we got it for less than $20,000, I believe. So thank you, Mr. Scott, for seeing our mechanics. Uh, we hooked up a walking track light at the Arthur Park that was out for a couple of years. Uh, we cleaned up uh, and cut grass at a vacant house on Vernon Street that was left vacant off of Dixon Boulevard. We replaced three stop signs and put up two new street signs on Perry Street and Alma Avenue in the Continental One area. That concludes my road matches report for the month of June. Would any of you two like to add anything else to it? Am I missed? Yes, sir. All right, number six, Sue's report, Mr. Scott. Um, yes, in the month of June, uh, we did complete the Redstone Brownfield Sewer Project that we've been working on behind the township building. Uh, all the pipe was complete. They completed the restoration about two weeks ago. Um, we are holding money back for a restoration touch-up due to uh, no rain for the past couple weeks. The grass is struggling to grow, but I do see in the past couple days um, there is some more growth. So if you are a resident and it was affecting your yard, uh, please be patient. Um, we, they will be back. Um, I did call them to get a last piece of equipment out of here yesterday, so they told me they didn't have it out of there by the end of this week. Uh, there are no issues at the pump stations to report in the month of June. Um, we conducted a audit. Uh, McLaurin Wolf is doing the audit for the 2019 uh, sewage fund. That audit should be complete by next month's <coughs> meeting. I will give a report at that meeting. We awarded a quote to Lee's Plumbing for a black flow preventer at 314 Meadowlark in Craig Meadows. Um, they have 10 days to complete that. They also just completed a new sewer tap on Red, uh, Reservoir Road by Hutchison for a new, a new construction home. Uh, DEP's corrective action plan report was submitted uh, July, oh, will be submitted by July 20th, 2020. Uh, we had a DEP complaint at 356 Walnut Hill Road. Uh, the investigation resulted in it's not sewage. Um, we've been there before. It's just a wet spot. We don't know if it's mine subsidence or what it is, but uh, it's been there. I've been here six years. I know I've been there at least two or three times in neighbor calls. And, we go out and look into it, test the water, and check the sewer line, and there's no issues. So we can't really explain why it's there, but I think the homeowner is going to do something to try to dry it up. Um, sewage payments can be made online in our drop box in front of the township building, or you can mail your payment. Our office doors are still closed uh, due to COVID. We don't see any reason to have face-to-face -face contact when we give all the options that we have to pay your sewage bill. Um, should you have hardship, um, not paying your sewage bill, just call us. We'll set you up with a payment plan. We will work with you, but you have to call us. We don't know if you need help. We don't know it. 
Um, the garbage and recycling are still being picked up as normal. I know we have some issues with recycling. Um, Bob's going to get into that later in the meeting, but we have a, hopefully found a solution for that. That completes my sewage report. Anything else, Mr. Chip, I'd like to add? No. Thank you, Mr. Scott. We'll go on to item number seven, the code enforcement report, officer's report. I'll handle that. For the month of June, uh, we sent out five letters for property repairs. Uh, we had a sweep ticket issued, uh, one paid uh, for a sanitation problem. Uh, junk vehicles, we had two. Dog complaints, we had one. Burning complaints, we had four. Uh, we can only burn on Saturdays from 8 to 5 in South Union Township. And it must be a control blaze, and if, uh, you have to, that means you have to be with, around it watching it. It must be out by 5 o'clock. High weeds and gra grass, we have five complaints. Uh, we allow up to 10 inches before we send you a, no uh, a notice first, and then after that we send you a citation. Uh, quad complaints, we had two official complaints. I know there's more quads running around the township. Uh, delinquent garbage accounts, we had 14 for the month of June. One parking complaint. Uh, citations issued by our code enforcement was 15. Uh, we had some tickets given out for handicap was 24. The fire lane was 10. Uh, and then miles traveled throughout the township. We have a full-time officer right now, Monday through Friday, 7 to 3.30. He travels 790 miles, but he's also the zoning officer. And our part-time officers who travel in the evenings on weekends travel 1,495 miles throughout the township. That completes my report. If you have something else you'd like to add, we'll ship our next spot. Okay. Let's go on to number eight. Motion to approve minutes of the previous meeting. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of last month's meeting. Okay. Motion by Mr. Schiffer. We have a second. I'll second. Second by Mr. Scott. Any questions on the motion? Roll call. Mr. Schiffer. Yes. Mr. Scott. Yes. Mr. Bernie. Yes. Motion carries. Number nine. Comments on the agenda. Comments on the agenda items. Okay. We're going to number ten. Update on Menard's project, Mr. Schiffer. You've been on top of that. Well, yeah, we, we've been uh, working with Menards for their project. It's still pretty much on schedule. Uh, they're completing their due diligence. Also, the, uh, the main topic of interest right now that, that we're trying to complete is the developer's agreement. Uh, that's a very important document. That sort of sets the tone uh, from the legal standpoint and all the things that are required by the developer to do and meet the township requirements. Uh, hopefully, I know our engineer, we have two engineering firms uh, working on this. Uh, that's one of the reasons. It's such an important project in South Union Township that will provide uh, additional needed tax monies. And, uh, and one thing I just want to bring up and remind it, not only are we getting the Menards uh, business, they have, I think, uh, eight eight out parcels that uh, they intend to, uh, nine out parcels they intend to develop, and that, that will be a continued flow of additional economic development in our township. So that's basically the uh, all the report that I have to give right now, uh, unless you gentlemen have anything else to Any yeah, update you want to add, Mr. Scott? Um, just, they did put a preliminary mm -hmm. plan out, and uh, my main concern is the residents that live down on Duck Hollow Road. I know we've had flooding in the past with that piece of property. Um, there have been corrections made by the redevelopment authority in the past couple of years. It has gotten better, but my main concern is definitely correcting the problems of the past with this new development. So um, that's the reason that we have, you know, two eyes looking at it just to make sure that everyone's on the same page and we make sure that these residents don't get flooded anymore. Okay. I, th I think this has been an issue for some time now, mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, I, I'm impressed with Menards, a very professional company, and, and with the Redevelopment Authority, I'm sure that uh, whatever we do, it will alleviate or eliminate any type of problems that we've experienced in the past with this area. Okay. okay we're going to number 11 then. Resolution for extension of benefits for vacant KOZ tax exempt parcels. We have a visitor. Can we come up to the podium? To explain this to the township residents, sure, and uh, to us. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your uh, your time and the opportunity to present this. Um, I'm Bob Shark. I'm with uh, Fayette Economic Development Council, 
and we're basically uh, the organization that handles all of the Keystone Opportunity Zone properties in the county, whether we're affiliated with them or not. Uh, just a brief overview, Keystone Opportunity Zones, or KOZs, are uh, geographic areas that are typically distressed, they're unoccupied, and this is a tax abatement program that is used to attract businesses to locate into those unoccupied parcels. Uh, the program's been in place since 2000 at least, and every 10 years, the parcels that are in or designated as KOZs, if they haven't already been developed, have to be renewed. Um, and so that's why we're here today. Uh, there is a, uh, some tax implications from a local level. You can see that on page three of your handout. Um, earned income, business gross receipts, sales and use tax, and the biggest one is property tax. So those are the kinds of things that um, are abated when a property is designated as a Keystone Opportunity Zone or KOZ. On page four of your handouts, um, there's a map. These are all the KOZ parcels that are uh, currently in Fayette County. All of these are set to expire at the end of 2020, so we're going out to uh, school districts and townships in the county to ask for these similar types of extensions for the properties that are still located in the KOZs. You can see there in South Union Township, there's a um, Brownfield Road site, 33.85 acres, that is highlighted on that main county map. Going behind it is a blow up of the properties that um, we're looking at in terms of requesting an extension on the KOZs. Um, you can see there, uh, right off of Burgettsfield Road, there is rail access from Southwestern Pennsylvania Railroad, which makes those sites relatively attractive for industrial development. Um, and it's right on the border there between South Union Township and Georges Township. And you can see there's uh, parcels in Georges Township that Faye Penn owns as well um, that are not KOZ anymore. They used to be, but they expired and uh, they weren't renewed. On the other page behind that, page six, there's an aerial view that shows you a bit of the topography of those two sites and maybe gives you a, a better indication of, of where those uh, particular acreage uh, locations are. And the total there, again, is about 33 acres or so that we're asking for extensions on. Um, and then the following page gives you a breakdown of those two parcels and basically their assessed value and what the anticipated tax revenues would be um, on an annual basis for those parcels. And if you multiply that by 10, if, if this is extended through 2030, um, you can see the total impact of those taxes. Um, why extend the KOZ? On page eight of the handouts, there's some, uh, some highlights there about the benefits of doing this. Again, this program's been around uh, since 2000. It's a statewide program. There are KOZs all over Pennsylvania. And again, the main attractant here is tax abatement for new businesses to locate in these vacant parcels, build facilities there, create jobs, uh, create private investment, and then when the tax abatement ends, uh, certainly there is a much more lucrative um, tax revenue stream that is going to be coming into the, to the township. Um, don't have exact figures for some of the other locations that have experienced that kind of growth and development uh, in your particular package, but certainly you can imagine if you've got a uh, 20 or 30,000 square foot facility that would locate on this acreage, creating jobs and investment um, and revenue streams and property tax, that's a lot more lucrative than the vacant land would be if this was still kept in taxation. Um, you can see on that bottom bullet there on page eight, we started out in 2000 with about 2,564 acres throughout the county that were designated as KOZs. There was some significant development um, from 2010 to 2020. You can see approximately 12 or 1,300 acres actually um, attracted businesses to go in and develop properties in KOZ acreage over that 10 year period. Slowed down a little bit between then and uh, between 2010 and 2020, um, and remaining is about 1,114 acres throughout the county in KOZ uh, tax abatement zones. Um, some of the businesses that have located in the county are on page nine, as, and uh, there's some testimonials from some of those folks on the page behind it. But in general, 
Um, most of those businesses that are listed there, starting at Duke Energy, that uh, came into a KOZ and then theirs expired in 2010. You can see the ones listed there in 2013 that expired. And then again, the ones that are expiring this year. Um, if you all had some desire to be in the particular locations that they went to because of the Keystone Opportunity Zone tax credit abatement. And again, there's some testimonials on page 10 there for some of the companies that we reached out to to provide that kind of verification. So. Without the KOZ uh, program, um, it's questionable whether these companies would have come in and located here in these particular areas because they did experience the benefits of the tax abatement for a certain period of time. Um, but once those abatement periods end, the tax revenue is substantially increased from the vacant land that would be otherwise there without the properties being developed. So that's it. I tried to run through that pretty quickly for you in the interest of time. Um, if there's specific questions on anything that I went through, I'd be happy to entertain those questions and try to answer them to the best of my ability here. Um, personal viewpoint, this is another tool that we need to have in order to try to continue economic development in the county. Um, without it, um, it's going to hamper our efforts compared to other KOZ properties that are in other places in Pennsylvania, for example, that could possibly drive some of that development in other locations. We have plenty of sites available for development that we're pursuing for KOZ. Um, you're probably familiar with the, uh, the Fayette Business Park that has been successful with uh, about nine or ten different companies there. All of that was KOZ at one point, those companies located there. Our um, University Business Park also has some KOZ property in it that we're using as uh, uh, a leverage to attract businesses to and uh, asking for your support in this. The school district also has to vote on this to approve it, and the county also has to approve, uh, vote on this to approve it. You're the first ones in the, uh, the schedule of meetings that I'm attending, so you're your first ones here. Thank you, Thank you. sir. Do you have any questions? No, I just remember when the program was initiated, uh, and you've had obviously some success in attracting businesses here, and, and I think anything that the township can do to still continue to further that effort that you've been making, uh, uh, I don't think that we'd have any any doubt in uh, extending the period of time and uh, hopefully it'll pay some benefits off in the future. I, I appreciate that. Um, we do have a, a, an ordinance, a resolution that uh, I think we, we have, have, yeah, we have it. Yeah, I think that was forwarded to you. Yeah, we have it. And just as information, you know, we're, we're trying to do some different things, marketing the, uh, the amenities of Fayette County here. Um, one of the things we've done is hired a commercial broker, SDN, out of Pittsburgh to represent our properties here in Fayette County, at least the ones that Fayette Penn owns, um, to potential tenants outside of the region that would come in and be attracted to uh, our location. So we're trying to do some different things to get more interest here, but, but certainly this is going to be a, a benefit to have the KOZ attracted. Thank you again. Thank you. At this time, do we have a, a motion to pass a resolution for extension of the benefits of the vacant KOZ property dimension from January 1st, 2021 through December 31st, 2030? I'll make a motion, up, but I have one uh, thing to add to the sure. the residents don't see. But our dollar amount in this in the piece of property we have, we, we would only be losing $50.77 a year yeah. on property taxes. So we're the smallest player in the game here. I mean, the school district looks to lose $1,550. So just to show how small of a deal it is for, for South Union Township, obviously we would rather see a business come into this piece of property where we eventually get mercantile wage and earned income. Those are the taxes that we're after and we feed our budget with, unlike the school district and the county, you know, have a bigger play in this. But I'll make a motion to approve the. A motion by Mr. Scott. We have a second. I'll second Mr. Scott's second motion. Mr. Shipbar. Any questions on the motion? We'll call Mr. Scott. Yes. Mr. Shipbar. Yes. Mr. Vernon votes yes too. Motion carries. I just want to item before we go to the next ten. What's uh, nothing mentioned in the paper? We didn't have anybody here from the paper office, but in the June meeting of our regular monthly meeting, we made a, a motion uh, to extend the face value period for the fiscal year for South Union Township real estate taxes until July 31st. 2020 due to, due to our, our COVID-19 virus. So that was never in the paper, but we, I think it's on our website that we did extend it. 
Yeah, I just like to mention that also for our residents. Okay, we go on to down number 12, resolution approving the Community Development Block Grant CARES Program 2020. We have a visitor here for that, Mr. Andrews. French, with my friend, explain that, if you would, please. Sure. Um, as part of the, uh, the CARES Your name Act, for the record, so everybody knows you are. Yeah. Not, you're South, you're a resident, uh, in I case am, they don't know you. I am. Um, <clears throat> so as part of the uh, CARES Act... It's Andrew response, French for Redevelopment Authority. <laughs> okay, go okay. ahead. Uh, the CARES Act, in response to the COVID-19 pandemic, um, there was uh, an allocation of funding uh, that's being made available through your uh, Community Development Block Grant Program. Um, so this funding originates still from the U.S. Department, or the uh, United States Department of Housing and Urban Development, and, uh, and then flows to the Pennsylvania Department of Community and Economic Development. The DCED decided to basically use their same formula allocation that they used for your regular CDBG funding for this, um, this infusion of money through the, the CARES Act. Uh, and we're referring to it as the uh, CDBG CV. So this will be on top of, again, your your regular 2020 allocation. Um, so the, the allocation for South Union Township under that program is the total allocation is $78,613. Um, we, we have um, some admin and delivery costs that come out of that, so the total amount you'd have available for actual project implementation is $63,463. Um, this carries all the restrictions that the regular CDBG program carries with it. Uh, in terms of eligible projects and uh, the uh, eligible beneficiaries. So we have to show that it still benefits uh, over 51% low to moderate income. Um, it has an added requirement <coughs> that it has to be spent in response to the pandemic. So something either to prevent or to respond to uh, the effects of the pandemic. And so that really narrows the scope uh, of projects that we can do with it. So um, I know I had a previous meeting with uh, Mr. Vernon, and we talked about possibly allocating these funds to your, reg your new regional recreational facility uh, to do some enhancements there as part of that upgrade um, so that we could make that facility uh, safe uh, for your residents. And really, it is a regional facility, so it's, it would be safe for, for anybody who would visit that, that place. It does qualify low mod income because, as I noted, even though the township uh, itself doesn't, uh, uh, is not above 51% low mod income, the area that you serve through your recreational programs uh, basically covers the whole southwestern uh, portion of the county. And that particular area does qualify as, as, as that. Um, your CDBG CV application is due uh, sooner than your regular um, allocation. It's, it's actually due um, in August. Um, so with this resolution, uh, once you pass that, it will allow us to prepare the grant application and get it submitted uh, so that we can, <clears throat> we can secure these funds. I would anticipate that these funds would become available uh, near the end of this year. So this would be a project that we would be implementing in 2021. Uh, all the funds um, through the CDBGCB have to be expended by 2022. So we'll have to definitely undertake that project in 2021 to spend the funds. Anything else? That's yeah. Mr. Shep, do you have any questions for No, me? I'm Mr. Scott. No, sir. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. French, for your, your time coming in. Hopefully our other grants that we turned in for the uh, indoor soccer facility will be approved this year. I'm hoping COVID doesn't have that big effect on everything. We really haven't got uh, wording from Dana from Mr. Ober's office. We talked to her. She did make some calls, and you know, we turned in the grants like we did last year, and you know, we had a pretty good feeling that we were going to be approved before COVID happened. But we're still optimistic, so hopefully, we can use some of this money as you know, match toward a you know, substantial grant. Okay. Yeah, and that's waiting for a, we have a, res a motion for a resolution approving the. Community Development Block Grant CARES Program for 2020. Your motion? I'll, yeah, I'll make it. Okay. Motion, Mr. Scott, I'll second. Sorry. I was going to. I wanted to give you the opportunity <laughs> no, first. Mr. Scott, yeah, I'll second it, Mr. There Scott's motion. Okay. Any questions on the motion? Okay. We'll call Mr. Scott. Yes. Mr. Vernon, yes. Mr. Shepard. Yes. Yes. Okay. Motion carried. Yeah. Motion number four passed. Okay. Mm -hmm. The next item. 
on our agenda is Law Enforcement Appreciation Day. Mr. Shipper is going to handle that. That was his idea, which I believe was a great idea. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Mr. Vernon. Uh, this uh, matter, or this agenda item, has been spawned to the result of the unfortunate and uh, death of Mr. Floyd in, in Minnesota. Uh, we're not going to be, we're not here today, today to debate uh, all the questions that uh, has arisen out of this matter. Uh, the unfortunate uh, things that have taken place, uh, I find very hard to, uh, to accept. Uh, there's great change in this nation. I remember back in 1968 uh, all the uh, social unrest and things that took place. It seems like we we're taking a, uh, a trip back, back to the future here with, uh, with what is going on today to, in this nation. Uh, but we won't dwell on that issue, but I, I think one thing that, that we must respond to as elected officials is the uh, the abuse and the unfortunate uh, pressures being put on our law enforcement uh, officials today? Uh, they are being made to look like the bad guys, and I think it's so important to this community, to this nation, that we get behind and support our law enforcement community. Uh, they're certainly a target. Of certain groups that has taken advantage of the unfortunate issue incidents in Minnesota. Um, some of the more liberal groups have taken advantage and acted, I think, in a sense of being a parasite to uh, to latch on to an issue and to try to try to exploit it for their own cause and further their their own interests, which I certainly question as to whether it's an interest in the benefit of this nation. But uh, I would like to make the following uh, resolution in the form of uh, the proclamation I'm about to read that uh, certainly does support and uh, the, the law enforcement community. So with that, I'd like to make this uh, resolution in the form of the proclamation. Uh, South Union Township Law Enforcement Appreciation Day. Whereas with the current vicious and despicable attacks being waged against the law enforcement officers around this country today. And whereas the law enforcement officers are the domestic protectors of our citizens, our society, and our way of life. And whereas a society cannot survive without the valor, dedication, and sacrifices of our law enforcement officers and the support of their families. And whereas responsible citizens, we have the moral duty to support the institutions and citizens who place their lives in peril every day so that our society can enjoy the rights, privileges, and freedoms our citizens of this great nation which our forefathers and God provided us. Now therefore, the following proclamation is hereby published. Wednesday, August the 5th, 2020, shall be proclaimed as the South Union Township Law Enforcement Appreciation Day by the Board of Township Supervisors. The residents of South Union Township are hereby encouraged highly to show their support to their local law enforcement officials on this day by any and all means appropriate. We offer our most sincere thanks and appreciation to those who place their lives in the Almighty's favor on a daily basis, protecting and serving the public. That is my motion, Chairman. I move by Mr. Schiffbauer. I'll second Mr. Schiffbauer's motion. Any questions on the motion? Roll call. Mr. Schiffbauer. Yes. Mr. Vernon, yes. And Mr. Scott. That's a yes, and that was well said, Mr. Schiff. Thank you. Very good. Yeah, excellent. Uh, further planning for the August uh, 5th Appreciation Day uh, at our monthly township meeting, that's why this day has been picked, we will be inviting uh, our law enforcement institutions here in Bay County, particularly the state police who provides our primary uh, enforcement, 
and also uh, the city of Uniontown who uh, provides the, uh, the observations and the enforcement of the laws on our sheepskin trail. So hopefully we'll be able to arrange a dedication and present uh, these two, ins these important institutions, uh, present some type of uh, uh, recognition that we will uh, gather upon that day. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. And I'm just glad that we certainly have the people who are protecting us, the state police. Uh, they do a great job and uh, they certainly certainly don't get the credit that they so deserve. And they certainly don't deserve the criticism criticism that is going on today. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Schiffer. Just going on line number 14, comments from the public. Anybody comments from the public now? Okay. Just going on number 15, the financial statement, our treasurer. It's Mr. Schiffer. Oh, you did not want to talk to him today. No, no. Okay, from our general fund checking account, $272,827.67 from the general fund investment account, $66,763.36, the estate fund, $616,755.18, the hydrant fund, $17,374.81, the athletic fund, $28,277.82, from the payroll fund, fund $54,442.36. The Tells on the Trails Fund, $5,567.75. And the North Union South Union Township Intergovernmental Board Fund, $12,352.36. And from the Recycling Fund, $85,202.12 for a grand total of $1,159,563.43. Uh, from our sewage fund, we have a total of $2,654,935.61, and with the two funds combined, we have a grand total of $3,814,499.04. That is my report. Excellent report, Mr. Schumper. Excellent. That's the first time I've got one right in many months. <laughs> Must have cleaned your glasses or something. You were spot on. Hey, before we go to the next item, I mentioned, Scott mentioned it earlier under the sewage. You want to go into a little bit of detail? You handle our problem we have with our recycling. Oh, yeah. You want to mention uh, that's yeah, the problem? Yeah, you can hear. Yeah. No, I just, Mr. Yeah. Scott mentioned I, I wrote it down at the bottom. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, we received notice from the Goodwill uh, a month or so back that they would not be continuing to collect recyclables throughout the township, as both for residential and commercial uh, recycling. Uh, they found it uh, to become too expensive and uh, I know we have been putting money into this uh, fund and expense uh, seems like on a yearly basis more and more money and uh, their agreement lasts until the end of this year but uh, as part of that agreement they are only obligated to collect until uh, I think mid-August. Uh, we've been on the hunt to find a re replacement for Goodwill. Uh, it's something that's not a, uh, uh, an activity where it's creating a lot of profit for these other companies, although we did find uh, some success in locating some help and possible replacement for uh, Goodwill. And uh, we're in negotiations right now with Goodwill uh, joining together with us in finding that replacement and hopefully here in the near future we'll be able to make an announcement, an official announcement that uh, we will have that the recyclables uh, continue to be picked up by a, another entity and uh, hopefully we will have that continued success as we did initially with our recycling program and goodwill. Uh, if anybody has any questions, uh, please give us a call. I know we've had a rash of complaints here in the last several months as Goodwill starts to wind down, I, I think their staff has become very uh, thin, and uh, I know they've had a lot of uh, employees leaving, uh, the recycling crews picking up, and I know the township is going around it tomorrow. I think today was one of the first days of this month for recycling pickups. We've received a number of complaints, and our township crews will be going throughout the township, and if we identify and find any recyclables not picked up, we'll be picking them up. And if anybody does have a, a question or a complaint, 
please give us a call here at the township. One thing I'd like to add, the, the contractor Bob's talking about that Goodwill's trying to find to pick up the recyclables for now, that's just for the remainder of 2020. Uh, we're in the process of getting a, a bid proposal together to put out. Hopefully that'll be out in September so we can actually, you know, bid it out. But right now we're, you know, we're in a bind and Goodwill's trying to find just a contractor to finish out the, the contract that they had. So anyone's interested in you know, bidding on it, I'd like to just, we're still putting it out for bid. We're just trying to get through yeah. this process till the end of the year. Yeah, it, it's funny. Initially, the uh, uh, this Act, Act 101, that created the requirement of municipalities of 10,000 grader to establish a curbside pickup for recyclables, residential and commercial. You know, it started out with a great hope and promise. Uh, the the money that was involved uh, with the materials being collected, the recycled materials being collected, uh, has uh, the value of that has dwindled. It seems like with each year, and here uh, about a year or so back, China has decided to not take a lot of our recyclables. It's really put a uh, uh, a dent in that market uh, that was being squeezed out anyways, and. Uh, it, it's just hard to find anybody uh, that is willing to make a commitment to collect these recyclables, certainly because of the, the economic restraints that are being placed upon it today that uh, it's just not profitable. And hopefully we will be able to find somebody that will continue this requirement by the state. I think the state has to step up to the plate and, and help the municipalities like us it's another unfunded, basically an unfunded mandate. Uh, I know there's some grant money with equipment, but there's a lot more expenses involved, uh, as we certainly have seen here in the township, uh, in running a recycling program. So hopefully uh, we'll be able to find that contractor and continue the program that's required by, by the state for us to, uh, to do. Okay, thank you, gentlemen, both of you. Okay, the next item on the, on the agenda is Number 16, motion to pay all current bills. Mr. Secretary, Mr. Scott. Yes, sir. I'll make the motion to pay the current bills from the state fund, $9,935.40. From the North Union, South Union Intergovernmental Board Fund, $11,204. From the South Union, or the Sewage Fund, $143,615.05. From the Recycling Fund, $2,636. <coughs> from the Hydrant Fund, $1,700.10 from the athletic fund, $805. And from the general fund account, $255,210.24. That's my motion to pay the current bills. Motion by Mr. Scott. Do we have a second? I'll second Mr. Scott's motion. Second by Mr. Shipfire. Any questions on the motion? Roll call of Mr. Scott. Yes. Mr. Shipfire. Yes. And Mr. Vernon, yes. Motion carries. Let's go on to number 17. Our engineer, Mr. Ogre. Anything to add to that? I, I don't. Most of it's been covered during the, the, uh, the meeting here, unless you guys have any questions, I don't have anything else. Any new businesses coming in, do you know of? Uh, the only business that uh, is currently uh, in the process of uh, receiving a permit is uh, the relocation of big lots from the shopping center to the on Kmart building. So. Any idea when they're going to open up? I do not. Nothing yet, okay. Any questions for our engineer, Mr. Scott, Mr. Shepard? Is there? Okay, let's go on to item number 18. Our solicitor who's pinch hitting for his father, yes. Mr. Jeremy Davis of Davis and Davis. Solicitor, you have any anything I, for us? No, I don't. I have nothing to report tonight. Okay. Okay, well, I just have one more item to mention to have before we adjourn. Um, every year at the Arford Area uh, Park, we have a picnic. This is going to be our 30th year, and I've been chairman for the last 12 or 13 years, but due to the virus, our, our committee voted last week to cancel the picnic because we've been our 30th on August the 1st. But hopefully we'll be back next year with it. It'll be a bigger and better, for hopefully. But I, I asked to, to announce that at our meeting. Uh, now the next item on the agenda is Mr. Scott's favor. Uh, hey, I've got to say first, though, that I know this breaks your heart not having the offered picnic because you look forward to that all year long. Yeah, for 30 years we did That's like 29. That's like your pinnacle. Yes. Right next to Election Day, <laughs> then, then it's Arvin Picnic. 
<laughs> Thank you, Mr. Scott. And well, I commend you on it because it is. It's a nice town for all the residents. And, yeah, four or five hundred people. Yeah, and everybody nice. likes it. So I know it's going to be all the new residents. Yes. All the disappointed people that you're not having it this year. But like you said, next year. Yeah. I'll make a motion to adjourn at four forty. I'll oh, second Mr. Scott's motion. Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Scott and a second by Mr. Schiffbeier. Any questions mm -hmm. on the motions? Roll call, Mr. Scott. Yes. Mr. Schiffbeier. Yes. And Mr. Vernon. Yes. Motion carries. This meeting is now adjourned. Thank you very much. You know, I would like to say something now. Maybe I'll get in trouble for this. I just think it's unfortunate our local newspaper doesn't find what happening in South Union Township is not important enough to cover. Uh, we've been covered for many years, I know, since I've been here. And it's just an unfortunate thing because I know the public looks forward to uh, finding out what's going on in our township, but uh, the newspaper evidently sees that it's not that important. Uh, it's unfortunate. Okay. Hey, thank you. Jeremy, I have a question for you.